My name is Renee Cohn, and I am your child's uh, yoga teacher at their early child uh, center. Um, I am a registered yoga teacher with 200 hours that allows me to teach adults, but I teach children instead. So I have my RCYT, which is a registered children's yoga teacher and I am um, a member of Yoga Alliance. I, um, I am married. I have um, two, three children. Nobody lives in St. Louis. One lives in Israel, one lives in California, and one lives in Vegas, Las Vegas. And I have a dog, Sophie, German Shepherd, one year old. And I have a horse, his name is Merlin, he's a boy. He's uh, going to be 18 years old this April. So that's a little something about me. I have been practicing yoga myself since 2008. And I've been teaching children yoga at early childhood centers since 2013. So today's video, and this is all new to me, so please bear with me. Um, I'm just gonna go over um, this packet that you might have received. If not, you could ask your director. And, um, and then I'm gonna go over how I set up a little yoga uh, studio, which you can do at home. Any, any quiet space, um, it can be on hardwood floors or tile or carpet. All you need is, um, if you have a yoga mat, if you don't have a yoga mat, no problems, just a big nice towel will work and unfold that and just put it on the ground. And if you're gonna be using a towel or even a yoga mat and since you're home, I would suggest socks off because you can really slip on these towels. Um, and then if you have a couple extra towels, I don't do this with the kids at the um, preschool because I can't um, carry everything with me, but these towels are great to um, you fold up and then roll up like a bolster and later I'll show you how to use that. Or I have these cotton blankets too that will work. And also at the end of our yoga practice, when we go into relaxation, Shavasana is nice to put over you and, and keep warm and cozy. But I don't get to do bring those to school because it's just too much stuff to carry. So actually there's gonna be more things you can do um, in your own home. Um, I always start, oh, and also, I have little decorations when I when I do yoga with the kids and it's very simple because I can't carry a lot but he, since I'm at home I brought out um, this light thing that my son made once and then um, I have some pretend flowers because later we're gonna do a breathing exercise with that and then I just have some wood blocks that I had left from my kids and just some good old rocks that I found um, and I'm just, I just decorate it. So you can use Legos, you can put down your favorite books, be creative. This is your time to be creative and just put anything, your little um, focus center, your little decoration, always kind of makes it look nice. You can even put a flashlight if you don't have a light. I do, when I go to their center, I have a fake candle that I put on. And then the other thing that I use um, in the beginning of yoga, this is called a ask your child, it's a singing bowl, and they know this is called the mallet. And so it makes a sound. And then I always ask them to listen to that sound. And when the sound ends, I say, since it's morning time when I do yoga, I say good morning to them, and then they say good morning back to me. Now, not everybody has a singing bowl in their closet, I know. So the next best thing is, this is metal stainless steel mixing bowl, or again, stainless steel saucepan and a wood spoon. If you don't have a wood spoon, um, 
a metal spoon would work. You could even try a plastic spoon or just a spoon that you eat with. So to do, to, to make a sound. So the, the trick to this though is to keep your hand flat, place it on top, and then make sure your fingers are flat and just give it a little tap. So that's one way to make a sound. And same thing if you're using a uh, stainless steel saucepan, hand flat and give it a little tap on the side. And that makes a different sound. So you can alternate back and forth. Just be creative, go through your house. I would not recommend using glass for those reasons. So um, let me get started with the packet. <clears throat> So the first page, um, it's going to say at the top, Hug a Tree LLC, because that is my LLC. And then it's going, it's going to um, tell you what is yoga and why yoga for young children. Not just for only young children, but for older children like ourselves too, because we are all children at heart. So that explains that. And then the next page is yoga for you. So it lists um, different things. What, what to do when you are doing yoga. Sit up tall, close your eyes, and bring your attention to your breathing. So just follow these little things and see how it makes you feel. If you're uncomfortable with that, that's okay. Don't do it. But it's something to, new to experiment with. Then most important, if you are gonna be doing yoga with your children, here's yoga tips for adults. And I'm not gonna read through these because um, hopefully you will get this. And then the benefits of yoga. So this is for anybody, any age. And then focusing on the children, benefits of yoga tools for preschool children. And then more benefits of yoga. Then I have a page that how, uh, how the pose works. So it explains these different poses are all different. They're standing poses, balancing poses, forward bends, back bends, twists, inversions, which inversions means is when your heart is higher than your head. So it explains what all these do for you. And then when I do jo uh, the yoga with the children, our yoga practice, we start with the singing bowl. And then from there, we go into a warm-up sequence. So these are warm-up sequence that I do with the children. There's four of them here. So um, they can be done in any order that you want, but definitely following the order of the sequence of each, um, each sequence poses. And then after we do our warm-ups, we do our breathing exercises, which I call centering, because you're centering your body and listening and feeling your breath. So I have a couple pages of those. On the last page, uh, down at the bottom, it's, it tells you which poses are energizing and stimulating breaths. So if you, um, have your child and so much bottled up energy, these are good uh, breathing exercises to do to release some of that energy. And then I have games that um, I do with some of the children at their centers. Now, I'm probably not gonna do any games um, in, the, in these yoga videos, but you certainly could do these at home and there's a page and a half of those. And some of those games have songs to go with them, so I have the lyrics to some of the songs. And then when we're ready to do the yoga poses, um, I like to incorporate books. So um, I have a list of books. Um, you might have these at home. If you don't, there's always Amazon, sorry, not the library. Um, I'm gonna be reading some of these books too, so you can get the books that way also. Just save that video. 
And then on the other page, well, at least on my other page, it'll be a separate page for you probably, I have what poses that you use, that are what poses are done in these particular books. Because not all the animals, like most of the animals have a yoga pose, but not all the animals have a yoga pose. And that's when I ask the children, well, let's make one up. So just think of how that animal is, if it's on two feet, four feet, is it tall, short, and just make up a yoga pose, be creative. And then I have um, uh, the poses, what the poses look like and the verbiage of how to do the pose. So it'll say the name of the pose, what kind of pose it is. It says mountain pose, it's a standing pose. And then it'll say feet together, arms down by the sides, inhale through the, no through the nose slowly, and then exhale through the nose slowly. And then it shows you the picture of the pose. So I have several papers of poses um, for you. Um, some of the games, I have um, songs too here. So here's a list of songs that you could get on iTunes. And then there's another paper on props that I use. Um, you may have something like this at home, like just a, a playground ball or any kind of ball to play um, the ball game. If you have pinwheels or even fake flowers work for breathing. Anything, just, just kind of look around and see what you have at home. And then last, the resources. So these are resources um, that I have looked at and used. There's so much more out there. So um, that's just, I just wanted to go over the packet. Um, so I'm gonna end this video with that. And I will end with saying thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to do this um, virtual yoga. And please remember, I have not done this before, so I'm going to be learning and I'm going to be um, uh, experimenting as well. Thank you.